Well, with COVID-19 cases rising across the world, scientists are racing to find effective treatments. And today, a new press release of a study from Oxford University in England certainly got a lot of attention. Let's talk about the study's findings with our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. It's been a while. It's good to talk to you again. Pyle, tell us about the drug that was tested. Uh, what were the findings? What do we know? Hi, Tom. Nice to see you again, too. So this was actually a study of a drug called steroids, or a class of drugs called steroids. And the drug itself was called dexamethasone. And the drug has been around for decades and decades. And we often use steroids to treat a number of different conditions, autoimmune conditions, certain types of pneumonias or infections, and many other conditions. And as we've talked about before, part of the problem with COVID-19 is not just the virus, but the body's response to the virus and the way the immune system overreacts to the virus. So the idea was that if you use a steroid, turn down the response of the immune system, you could potentially have some benefits. So this was a randomized controlled trial, which we've talked about before, is the highest level of evidence, where they took patients and randomized them to either receive the steroid medication or randomized them to receive usual standard of care. And these were hospitalized patients in the United Kingdom. And what they found was that dexamethasone actually has a mortality benefit. So it reduces the likelihood of dying from COVID-19 by one third invented patients and by one fifth in patients that are getting oxygen therapy. Interestingly, there was no benefit noted in people who were not on respiratory support, so not on the ventilator and not getting oxygen therapy. But it really got us all very excited, even though the data has not yet been peer reviewed or vetted yet, because it shows promise in saving lives. And it's the first drug in COVID that has shown to do that. Yeah, we worry about getting ahead of ourselves. All of us are so excited about any progress, but we you know, you get excited about remdesivir and then hydroxychloroquine becomes a buzzword for a while. This, that, of course, now the FDA yeah. withdrew that emergency use authorization earlier this week. So uh, where does this study compare as far as how far along it is compared to some of that early news we'd gotten about some other treatments? Great question. So yeah, it's very early in its process at this time. So it is high quality data because it's randomized control data, but it's not been vetted and rigorously um, reviewed. So we don't yet know whether it's ready for prime time. Now, what the study does show is that this drug, dexamethasone, which is a widely available steroid. It's cheap, it's inexpensive, it's even in the developed world, saves lives. It saved one out of eight lives in ventilated patients and one out of 25 lives in patients on oxygen therapy. Now, the authors of the study also postulated that if we had known this at the start of the pandemic, because this drug has been around for decades, we could have saved 5,000 lives just in the United Kingdom alone. Now, what the study doesn't show is benefit in preventing COVID-19. It shows no benefit in those who have mild disease, and it actually shows no benefit in those who don't require respiratory support. And I really want to issue a word of caution here because over-interpreting over the science is really what's led to this problem with hydroxychloroquine and some of the other drugs. But do not take this drug for mild cases or if you're not in the hospital because taking steroids can actually reduce the immune response and actually increase your risk with COVID-19. So take it with a grain of salt. It's very early, but very promising because it's the first drug to show a mortality benefit. Yeah, we're talking about saving people at the, at the very end of the line from dying, but it, you know, what do we learn from something like this? The idea that a steroid is an effective treatment, uh, is that also become another part of the clue in, in putting together vaccinations ultimately? Yeah, Tom, it's telling us a lot actually about this disease process itself and what it's teaching us perhaps, and what the next set of studies is actually going to look into is whether a cocktail of a steroid plus another medication. So you turn down the volume of the immune response, and at the same time, you use antiviral therapy or other types of therapies to decrease viral replication. That may be the most effective. And similarly, with response to your question about the vaccines, we're also learning that we have to try to design a vaccine that induces the immune system enough so that it learns how to fight the virus, but not so much so that it actually causes side effects or problems or becomes dangerous. So the therapies for this, this uh, virus actually teach us about the pathogenesis of it, the virus itself too. And we learn a lot all the time and we appreciate you explaining it to us, uh, some of the stuff that we don't quite understand yet. So it's always good to talk with you. Thanks again, Dr. Pyle Coley.